What's up, Habibis? Long time no see. I'm gonna start off this theory by saying this. After I recorded the five things number six video, there's this mystery that's been on my mind that I've never really got the solution to. So let's go back to the Mob of the Dead loading screen, right? This is the Weasel's journal, correct? And everything that's in here is things that Weasel is knowledgeable of. Now let's look at that code that I decoded, which translates to... <laughs> The giant is in France. Now that's really interesting. Obviously, that's making a reference to Doris and the map Origins. Now let's think about this. Albert Arlington has been in Mom of the Dead, aka Hell, forever, stuck in this cycle. So he's basically dead and sent to Hell, right? And he's stuck in Alcatraz forever. And since he's stuck in this prison, he has no connections with the outside world. So how the hell would the weasel know that the giant is in France and write it in his journal? If he's stuck in this prison in America and doesn't even know what's going on in the outside world in America, then how the hell would he know what's going on in France? And how would he know that the giant is in France? And why was the giant being in France so important to the weasel to the point where he had to take note of that in his journal? Why does the weasel care about the giant being in France, AKA origins? Why is origins important to the weasel? Hold on to that thought because I'm gonna come back to it later on in the video and it's gonna make sense. Now I'm gonna actually start the video. Richtofen's plan. The plan that I'm talking about, by the way, is Maxis and Richtofen's plan to secure the children, whatever that's supposed to mean. It's the plan that's talked about in the Giants. One message that must be remembered at all costs. The child must be protected. And the plan that's talked about in Shadows of Evil through the codes and the notes. And there's the obvious questions that everyone's asking. Why are these kids so important to the point where there has to be a whole plan just to protect them? How did Richtofen know that he had to initiate, follow, or go through with this plan? Because the plan was started by Dr. Maxis, but not the Dr. Maxis from Origins, but the Dr. Maxis from the Giants. Because remember, the Dr. Maxis from Origins was already dead and his brain was being preserved, so he obviously had no big plan. So how would Richtofen know that a distant Dr. Maxis from a distant universe or dimension was making a plan and how did he know how to follow through with this plan? And why to follow through with this plan? If they are in two separate universes. It's as if Dr. Richthofen has been to the giant's dimension before. And that's how he knows of the plan going on there. So how could Richthofen have traveled to different dimensions before Origins? Now to kind of understand this theory, we have to think about Richthofen's journeys. Alright, this is what we know of Dr. Richthofen's journeys. Richtofen was at Origins, and then, while the crew went to the Giant, he was on his two-year departure from the crew, and eventually met them on the Giant. So on his two-year departure, he's getting things for him and Maxis's master plan, which includes the summoning key and Sal and Finn's blood vials. Now we know that this two-year departure happened between Origins and the Giant, correct? So that must mean that Richtofen's trip for the blood vials happened between Origins and the Giant, right? Actually, wrong, and this is where the mystery comes about, because Richtofen was wearing the blood vials on him during origin which means that he had traveled the dimensions to get these blood vials from mob of the dead before origins and that connects to the point i said earlier about richtofen traveling the dimensions before origins to find out about this distant maxis and his plan which makes me wonder is origins really the origins You know it's getting serious when the piano starts playing. Is Origins really the first map? Because Richtofen has been to places in other dimensions before Origins. Another question to ask is if Richtofen knows he is leaving the Origins dimension to meet the different Maxis to follow through with the plan, then why was Richtofen so worried and careful to preserve Maxis's brain? Think about it. If he knows he's leaving the dimension to meet with the well and alive Maxis for the plan, why would he care about the Origins dead Maxis? Now you may be saying, well, Richtofen didn't know about the plan during Origins and didn't know he would be leaving the Origins dimension. Well, that's wrong because again, before Origins, Richtofen traveled to Mob of the Dead to get the blood vials, which obviously has something to do with the plan, so he knew about the plan during Origins. Origins. Now, since Origins takes place in 1918, at the end of the war, Richtofen probably traveled to Mob of the Dead sometime in the beginning of the war, 1914, 15, or maybe even 16, or maybe even before the war started. So you might be wondering, why don't you run across Dr. Richtofen while playing Mob of the Dead? Well, it's because Mob of the Dead takes place in December 31st, 1933, and Richtofen got the blood vials from Mob of the Dead before 1918, so Richtofen already was at Mob of the Dead and left, so that's why you don't run into him while playing Mob of the Dead. 
he was already there and he's gone so the mob of the dead crew probably know who richtofen is or at least have seen him during the cycle which might have something to do with why the weasel keeps hearing nikolai's name maybe richtofen and weasel had some type of conversation and richtofen brought up nikolai or something like that i really don't know now think about what i said in the beginning of the video this all connects to that one point about the giant being in france in the weasel's journal how would the weasel know that the giant is in france the only possible way is for when Richtofen went to Mob of the Dead to get those blood vials, Richtofen had to inform the weasel that the giant was in France because Richtofen, according to this theory, like I said earlier, probably went to Mob of the Dead in the beginning of the war and went from France to Mob of the Dead to inform him that yes, the giant is in France. But why is Weasel such a character of importance to Richtofen to the point where Richtofen feels like the Weasel needs to know that the giant is in France? You know, why would he tell him that valuable information? Why is Weasel that important to Richtofen that he would tell him that little uh, secret, I guess? Well, it's not really a secret, but why does Richtofen feel like the Weasel needs to know that the giant is in France? How is the Weasel going to impact the war? You know what I mean? I feel like the Weasel is going to come back in the Black Ops 3 storyline in some type of way and affect it in some type of way. I don't know. Maybe the Weasel is part of Richtofen and Maxis's master plan to secure or protect the children. We don't know. I'm really excited to see in the future DLCs what they're going to do with that. And I feel like the Weasel is probably going to come back in the storyline in some type of way for Richtofen's plan. Also, more supporting evidence that Richtofen met with the Weasel in Mob of the Dead is the parallels between Richtofen and the Weasel's plan when the Weasel says, We gotta die first. And the Shadows of Evil note talking about Richtofen's plan that says, We all must die. Also, more parallels between Richtofen's plan and the Weasel's plan is that the characters don't trust the Weasel the same way that the characters don't trust Richtofen. Trust me, alright? Have I ever steered you guys wrong? You're gonna have to trust me on this. I know what I'm doing. I do have a purpose to kill. You only have to trust me. But again, just a theory. Also, when the weasel says, Damn it, Arlington. You gotta get the doc. Maybe he's referring to Dr. Richtofen. So when he calls for him, maybe he doesn't come because he left to go back to Origins. Uh, probably not. And that's really far out there, but I thought that was worth mentioning. Now, think about this. Since the characters are sent to Mob of the Dead as a punishment for their sins, then in order for Richtofen to go to Mob of the Dead, doesn't that mean that Richtofen had to be stuck in the Mob of the Dead cycle with the characters for his sins also? Because how else would he be sent there? Because remember, Mob of the Dead is like an afterlife or a purgatory. So in order for Richtofen to go get the blood vials and get out of Mob of the Dead to go back to Origins, I'm guessing he would have had to commit some type of sin to end up in Mob of the Dead, and then he would have to break the cycle so he could get back to Origins with those blood vials. So what could Richtofen's sin be? Well, let's take it from from the top this new dr richtofen claims to be good and unlike the version of himself that he killed but the characters don't seem to trust him your words are empty your soul is hollow how could you ever hope to put things right you can never wash away the blood of your hands richtofen you are an evil that must be stopped now at the core both richtofens must be pretty similar and even in terms of the quotes they aren't too different do not fear death Fear me! Don't be afraid of Jess! Be afraid of the doctor! Get off my legs, minion! Get off my legs, minion! Die, Schweinhund! Schweinhund! Die! Boom! You are dead now! Boom! You are all dead now! Embrace your fate! Begin anew! Accept your fate! Begin anew! And more proof that the origins of Richtofen is pretty similar to the original crazy Richtofen is these quotes right here. My name is Edward Richtofen! Fear me! Yes, the blood! It flies everywhere! A shower in the blood! I want! No! I need more blood! Your death brings me pleasure! I am your lord and master! So as you can see, the origins of Richtofen still is kind of that same old crazy Richtofen, and you can see the similarities. Even though he tries to tell the other characters that he's different, just remember that Teddy is a liar. And also before the storyline, one Richtofen unleashes the origins of Richtofen from behind behind the teleporter door, just listen to how the characters explain and describe the origins of Richtofen. Don't do it! You do not want to meet what's on the other side of that door! You cannot begin to comprehend the great evil you could unleash! <laughs> you
you cannot begin to comprehend the great evil that's behind that door. Like, what? Is Richtofen, is the Origins Richtofen really that bad? I feel like our characters know something about Richtofen that we don't. So what did the new Richtofen do for our characters to not trust him? What blood does Richtofen have on his hands? Now since Richtofen is a Nazi scientist, I'm guessing he was experimenting with people or he killed somebody. So my guess is that Richtofen's evil deed is that he killed somebody. Now it can't be storyline 1 Richtofen because killing him was a good deed on Richtofen's part. Or maybe that's what Richtofen wants you to think. Maybe he is trying to trick the characters into thinking that he's a good guy and tries to prove it to them by shooting the old evil Richtofen. Maybe it's just all part of his plan. Maybe the other characters not trusting Richtofen is trying to tell us something. Now going back to what I said, whose blood is on Richtofen's hands that he can't wash away? Now if this killing whoever it may be is the sin that sent him to Mob of the Dead, that would make sense because that's how the Mob of the Dead characters got sent to Alcatraz, for killing. Sal, Handsome, Ben, they, they're, they're all stone cold killers. They're all murderers, so Richtofen would fall into their category. Now my theory is that the person that Richtofen killed is actually Dr. Maxis. Now you might be thinking, nah, 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 because Dr. Richtofen actually wanted to bring this dead Dr. Maxis back to life by preserving his brain until he finds a new host for it, which ended up being the Maxis drone. And he also might be saying that Dr. Richtofen actually looked worried when he was cutting out Dr. Maxis's brain, like he really hoped and wanted his brain to be preserved. Which is all true, but think about this. What if Dr. Richtofen killed Dr. Maxis in the beginning of the war, was sent to Mob of the Dead for his sin of killing Dr. Maxis, while the beginning of the war was going on, like I mentioned earlier in the video, met the weasel in Mob of the Dead and told him about what's going on in France, realizes the error of his ways in order to get out of Mob of the Dead, as Billy Handsome says, Am I stuck here until I see the error of my ways? Until I repent? Implying that to get out of this Mob of the Dead purgatory hell, they have to realize the error in their ways or realize that he's done wrong which he does realize that he's done wrong and that's what breaks Richtofen's cycle in Mob of the Dead which sends him back to Origins and he realizes the error of his ways and tries to make things right and undo what he did which is why he looks so worried he realizes the error of his ways what have I done stop it David breathe it's okay it's okay and isn't it suspicious that in Origins we never actually learned how Maxis died? He just quote unquote from Richtofen says that he lost his sanity. Agatha is a myth. A myth that cost Maxis his sanity. And whenever Richtofen does talk about it, he says before his demise, but there's like a little pause in between, which is a little bit suspicious. Almost like Richtofen knows where it really happened to him. Before his demise, Maxis grew obsessed with these recordings. And the reason Dr. Richtofen would kill Dr. Maxis in the first place is because, remember, this Dr. Richtofen doesn't seem to be too different from the original Dr. Richtofen, according to our characters, which is why he would still have that greed factor to him and want to kill Dr. Maxis, just like the original version of Dr. Richtofen tried to in our original storyline. And remember again, this is all just a theory. So I mentioned how Richtofen went to Mob of the Dead to get the blood vials, or maybe Richtofen never went to Mob of the Dead and instead went to Shadows of Evil when the Mob of the Dead crew was still living there before they were sent to Alcatraz and that's when he got the blood vials. And that also might explain why at the end of the Shadows of Evil Easter egg, Richtofen just pops in and pops out like he knows what he's doing and like he's been there before. He just pops in and pops out like he knows what to do and where to get the summoning key. He doesn't pop out of that little portal and, you know, look around for anything like that, even though it was right in front of him, but still, you know what I'm saying? Pops out of the portal like he knows what to do and just leaves. But wait, if Richtofen got the blood vials from the Mob of the Dead crew during Shadows of Evil, then how come the vials have their prison numbers on them? This means that Richtofen had to have went to Mob of the Dead to get these blood vials while they were prisoners. Because if he went to Shadows of Evil to get those blood vials, there obviously would be no prison numbers on them because they haven't even been sent to Alcatraz yet by the cop, Jackie Vincent, and they weren't prisoners yet. So he had to have gotten those blood vials from Mob of the Dead. Also, I just mentioned that the Mob of the Dead crew used to live in Shadows of Evil before they were sent to Alcatraz, and I'm pretty sure everyone already knows this by now, but just in case you didn't, some cool proofs to this is Al's Barbershop, which is a reference to Albert Arlington, aka The Weasel, O'Leary's Bar and Lounge, which belonged to Finn O'Leary, DeLuca Shipping, which is making a reference to Sal DeLuca, and of course the little Easter egg of Sal's Laundry Note, 
which shows that they were people that used to function in this town. And as you can see right here on the note, it says Sal DeLuca, showing that it was his laundry note. And by the way, real quick, I just want to say that this is not my picture, obviously, so I'm not trying to take credit for it. This is just the most HD clear picture I could find of this note, and it's obvious that it's Mr. Darling JD's. But anyway, lastly, Jackie Vincent's quotes about the characters, including Billy Hansen. What is this? One of Billy Hansen's trophies? Finn O'Leary's whiskey tasted better than this shit. I once busted a little weasel who tried to use one of these to blast open a bank safe. Dumbass nearly blew himself up. This packs more explosives than I used to need to bust open a bank vault. I remember once calling this a grenade launcher. Was I right? Oh, stop your fucking bitching. Could have been worse. You could have been sent to Alcatraz. Now, since we're on the topic of connections between Shadows of Evil and Mob of the Dead, let's look a little bit closer to Al's barbershop. The first thing I noticed was CJ's printing ink. Now, we all know that the weasel was really into comic prints and even made his own, so that might be making a reference to that. It also makes sense for a comic printing shop to be there because like I said in five things number six in the late 30s and the early 1940s is when comic books became popular and they used to sell them at printing shops like these and shadows of evil takes place in 1942 which again is around the time when the comic books became popular so that'll make sense for the printing shop to be there in shadows of evil of course this is just a theory i don't know if that's what they were referring to by putting cj's printing shop above al's name but i just thought that was interesting another cool point about al's barbershop is if you look closely and read the curved line of text it says the best haircut that won't grow back i don't know what they're trying to point out by saying that maybe that owl's bald or something i don't know i don't know i just thought that was interesting another cool little easter egg that i found was if you look at the prices of the cuts it says shampoo five cents haircut 20 cents shave and cut 30 cents and beard and trim your soul i thought that was pretty cool again because shadows of evil and mob of the dead are like the afterlife and stuff like that also something interesting is the placement of the shotgun on al's barbershop now there was a popular theory a long time ago that mob of the dead was all in the weasel's imagination or anything he would write in his journal became a reality now even before the weasel or any of the characters get the blunder gat he keeps bringing it up we have to get the blunder gat we find the right gat we get something better. Now we just need the right weapon. This guy's gonna win me a ticket off of this rock. As long as I got this, you creeps ain't getting near me. Just wait till I upgrade this thing. Didn't I tell you this guy was awesome? It's almost like the weasel favors shotguns. So according to the theory, it's like the weasel imagined the ideal shotgun for him and wrote it in his journal and the blunder get popped into existence on mob of the dead or weasel's imagination which is mob of the dead according to the theory again super far-fetched to why there's a shotgun on al's barbershop because he favors shotguns and he imagined the ideal shotgun on mob of the dead but these are things that cross my mind and some things i heard floating around the whole weasel's imagination theory so i thought again it was at least worth bringing up some other cool connections between the weasel and shadows of evil is when the weasel says i toured the dust bowl with a circus six months the great magnifico had a magic cabinet a lot like this box that reminded me of nero and stuff like that because obviously shadows of evil is like a performer city in a city of show and entertainment and obviously there were many magicians and stuff like that but nero was just one of the bad ones and also when weasel says you got me pegged as some dumb palooka don't you now i was wondering what a palooka was so i looked it up and a palooka is basically um um an unskilled or uh, a clumsy boxer which reminded me of floyd campbell from shadows of evil because obviously it's not that he wasn't skilled but he didn't have the skills exactly to win the championship that he knew he needed to win so that's what that reminded me of but i don't know again it could just be something else and meant a different way it's all a theory now going back to origins an important question that no one seems to be asking is after the origins easter egg the characters were sent to riches beyond their imagination as samantha says the four heroes were rewarded with riches beyond imagination you will be rewarded beyond your imagination they became gods basically and were worshipped and the people that inhabited the area carved statues of their godly selves into the walls or the catacombs of france now the important question that no one is asking is Whatever happened to that? Whatever happened to Richtofen and the crew becoming gods? Now, the reason you see these statues of the ancient slash godly versions of the characters even before you complete the Easter egg is because this all happened before. They are stuck in a cycle. You don't even remember how long this has been going on. How long we have been trapped here. The loop must be closed. 
So if the Origins Easter egg ends with the characters becoming gods and the giant takes place after Origins, then when they teleport to the giant, shouldn't they be in their godly forms? There's something that broke the Origins cycle that we don't know about. What stopped the characters from becoming the Ancients? What broke the cycle? Another interesting question to ask is, we know that the purple-eyed zombies are running crazy strictly off of Element 115, but we know that the yellow-eyed zombies have a controller which is Samantha. But how is Samantha controlling them? Where is the MPD in the Origins universe? Is it Agartha? Because according to Samantha herself, in Origins, she says, Free me from Agartha. So if she's controlling the zombies, does that mean that when you are in Agartha, you are basically in the MPD? Now remember, Doris never happened in the Origins universe, which means that Rick Toffin never teleported Samantha to the moon to be in the MPD. So how is Samantha controlling the zombies on Origins? Well, you were probably already thinking ahead this whole time, because the answer is imagination. It's Samantha's turn to play with the toys. Now you're probably thinking, Habibi, this is nothing new. Why are you talking about this? The reason I'm bringing this up is because this shows that Element 115 works completely different in the Origins universe than how it did in our first storyline universe. In the first storyline, Element 115 and the zombies had to be controlled through the MPD, which acted as a controller while the Element 115 and the zombies acted as an antenna that picked up controlling signals from the MPD and that's how the zombies were controlled. But in our second storyline universe, Element 115 works differently. There's no MPD needed to control the zombies, they can be controlled through imagination by the children. And that's besides the simple and obvious differences between Element 115 from both universes. In the original storyline universe, Element 115 was green, and now in the second storyline universe, Element 115 is blue. So they're purposely showing that they're a little bit different and they work differently. Also in our second storyline universe, Element 115 can be controlled through certain songs, unlike our first storyline universe. But something more important than all of this is that these kids are with and alive Dr. Maxis. Which means that they are in a completely different dimension than Origins because the Dr. Maxis in Origins is dead. So the reason this is so important is because if Samantha and Eddie aren't even in the Origins dimension, how is Samantha controlling the zombies on the Origins dimension? Are these children's imagination so powerful to the point where they can control all of the zombies across all dimensions of that universe? Maybe that's why these children are so important and must be protected according to the plan. It seems like for the toys they play with, they imagine a storyline for those dolls and their imagination pops into existence. So when we first saw the Origins ending cutscene and we all thought that zombies was all a child's game, it's not that zombies never happen, but that they played with their dolls, imagined a story for them, and that story that they imagined popped into existence. Again, same thing with the weasel, how that theory says that he imagined it and it popped into existence. Which is maybe why the weasel is so important to Rick Toffin's master plan because he's similar to the two kids in the way that he can imagine things and they pop into existence according to the whole Weasel Mob of the Dead imagination theory, if that theory is true. Maybe that's why these children are so important and there's a whole plan for them because Maxis and Richtofen realize that through their imagination, they control reality and the future and the dimension's fate is in their hands. And Maxis and Richtofen realize that. Only I can save you. We can change the world. I have the power to shape the world as I wish. What's up Habibis and I hope you guys enjoyed the video and now for the important message right so I realized that I'm very inconsistent with this channel and stuff like that and I'm gonna try to change that so what I'm gonna do hopefully is in between the five things you did not know about zombie videos and the zombie theory videos what I'm gonna be doing is posting like um, challenge videos and starting room challenges and playing with you guys and stuff like that things that I know I can bring the quality and the quantity to at the same time so I um, I can be more consistent with the channel so yeah in order to play with me my PSN is Habibi H A B I B I underscore gaming and this account has no friends so don't worry when you see it yes it is the right one even though it has no friends because I literally just started it up and also follow me on my Twitter so you know when I post the next five things you did not know about zombies and of course guys check out the vlogging channel I post frequently on there and you can see what's going on with me when I'm not doing zombie stuff we're always messing around on there and there's already some videos on there right now that you could watch 
But yeah, I highly recommend you guys watch the vlogging channel. I do it at least once every week. But the main thing I wanted to tell you guys is that I'm going to be more consistent with this channel and I'm going to try to bring back uh, the zombie juke series that I used to do way back. So I got some ideas. Ah, right, Habibis. Catch y'all on the next one. Peace.